Mike here, Head Trader True Trader Group, closing the week out, uh, June 28th, Friday. Finishing a strong week before we head into a slow day, I mean a slow week next week. Next week, July 4th week, we got um, a slow week and a short week. Uh, so I was happy to come into today <clears throat> and finish the week strong. Two trades for me today. Neither one of them were big. Neither one was a home run. But singles add up, guys. Singles add up. We had a, we had a strong week in here. Um, you know, I didn't want to do anything too crazy today. Coming into the day, the watch list was small again today. Uh, this, the midday afternoon session was very, very slow today. Um, and I didn't really love much on my pre-market watch list. Similar story to the last couple of days. Last couple of days, I haven't loved much. I've been very patient. It's kind of been like the, the topic of the week has kind of been patience. And today we came in and, um, it wasn't necessarily patience, but, um, it was just, you know, staying disciplined, focusing on singles and those singles add up. I had one single in FRSX and I traded, uh, an IPO today, real, uh, R E A L traded that one today for a nice little gain too. Um, and they add up. All right. So let's get right to it. FRSX first trade of the day, right off the bell. This thing just takes off rips, puts in this, this huge, huge push right off the bell. Okay, and then what we start to notice here, when I draw my Fibonacci retracement levels, is that we start to see some support here at the 38.2 Fibonacci level. What I was looking at here, guys, this reminded me a lot like the, the CETX trade yesterday. So if you guys missed my video yesterday on CETX, take a look at it because this area right in here, this reminded me very, very much of yesterday's action in CETX. So I jumped the gun a little bit here. When I saw this first tail back into VWAP and the, and, uh, the 32 Fibonacci level right here, so you have the 32 Fib level and VWAP right here, and you put this tail in, nice little support. We kept pushing higher. That's exactly what CETX did. And then I was waiting for another pullback down into this region on CETX yesterday and I never got it and the stock took off and it went without me. Um, at the time, I couldn't help but have that trade in the back of my mind yesterday. Go back and watch the video from yesterday, guys, if you missed it because then you'll really get a good feel for what I'm talking about. And I couldn't get that out of my head and I thought to myself that this was going to go without me once again. So I jumped the gun a little bit here and I entered this trade right here. I kind of chased this up a little bit Take it to my trade announcement so you guys can see long FRSX at 265. Okay, so there's the entry point at 265. And you can see then we start to pull ourselves back in. So right away, I'm underwater on the trade. We pull right down here into the 38.2 Fibonacci level. The trade line was also sitting here creating a little bit of an area of support. And then you guys can see this 38.2 Fibonacci level just continues to hold support. Well, we just kind of based out and then traded sideways. So this level just continued to hold. This was my stop loss. So we snapped below this level. I'm out. I actually said that the 230 area was, was kind of my stop loss area. And when we got down there on this candle, a really a, a nice size bid popped up at 225 when we got to 230. So then I said, okay, again, there's my out. That's my guy right there. There's good size there. If that starts to get taken out, I'll bang the bid too. I'll give him my shares and I'll exit my position. And we just never, the, the, the bid never got taken out. So I stayed in the position. That was that was my exit. Um, so I, I was able to stay in that position because of that. And we just kind of kept trading sideways, kept trading sideways until we finally perked up here, shot up through the high of the day. And I took some profit off right in front of the high of the day. And then as soon as we busted through the high, I took more profit off. Trade announcements, here you guys go. Took some profit at 271. Then I sold the bulk of the position at 287. And then I sold out the remaining piece at 260. So I lost five cents a share on this last piece. So again, guys, I'm long, two, long at 265. I sold 25% of the position at 271. I sold half the position at 287. And then I sold the other 25% at 260. So not a home run trade, but little, you know, a little profit to, to take from. And then here's my final exit. So here's the entry. Take one, take two. Sold out that last piece. So like I said, not a big trade, 
but today was not about the home runs. Today was about singles and how singles add up because then I went after another trade in REAL, which was an IPO today. And the IPOs have been extremely strong. Um, probably the best, this is the best IPO season that, that I can remember. Um, I mean, they've just been trading so well. You've had so many of these IPOs that just have make huge moves day one. So right off the bat with the reel, we opened up at 28. We shoot up to 30. Lots of resistance up there at 30. And we pull back in. And I just start to see this, this crazy support down here, okay, at 28.75. And it was exactly 28.75 to the penny, okay? This is... The low of this candle, 28.75. The low of this candle, 28.75. The low of this candle, 28.75. It was 28.75 to the penny, okay? Sometimes, guys, on IPOs, you will on IPO day, sometimes you will see them trade. You will see support and resistance levels trade to the penny um, because it's brand new. The stock's trading for the very first time. And you might have a large buyer at a specific price. You might have a large seller at a specific price. So a lot of times you'll get these levels hold to the penny versus when you're trading a stock that has been public for many years, it's not as clean because there's so many more takers. There's so many more shareholders. There's so many more um, you know, people with different average prices that are long from different price points. When a stock just IPOs, you don't really have that. You have people that are just trying to enter the trade, and then you have people that are part of the IPO that are selling their position. So sometimes you will get action like this on IPO day. Okay, we saw it on the support side. You had a big buyer at 28.75, and on the resistance side, you had a huge seller at 30. The high of this candle, exactly 30. The high of these three candles, exactly 30 to the penny. Okay, the high of this candle is 30.00. The high of this candle, 30.00, 30.00, 30.00. Actually, this one's 29.99, so off by one penny. But you guys see the point that I'm talking about. Okay, sometimes that's the action that you get on IPO day. So when I start to see this support here at 28.75, guys, I said, all right, I'm jumping in right here at 29.06. Here's my uh, entry, okay, at 11.03, long reel, 29.06. Okay, 29.06, and right away we just start to push. We just pushed right up here, right up towards 30. I sold 25% of my position right here, back to my trade announcements, at 29.90. Then I sold half my position at 29.81, and then my final take profit at 29.10. So there's the first take profit in front of the high of the day. Once I saw we were getting denied again at the high of the day, I took more profit off the table because it was like, man, we're getting really stuffed here at 30. I didn't know how long the stock was going to hold this up for. So I sold the bulk of my position right there at 281. And then you can see we rolled it over. Okay, so I was I was right in wanting to get flat up here after I saw we kept getting stuffed at 30. And then I sold out the last piece of my position right there. So here's long at 2906, 25% off right here, half off right here, and the last 25% off right here. So again, not a home run trade, but a nice trade, you know, and if you, you put it, you put together enough nice trades, you end up with a really nice day. And I was after this, I just shut it down. Things got very, very quiet at lunchtime and into the afternoon session. There was hardly anything going on. Um, you know, you've got the G20 summit going on. Trump's meeting with President Xi. Um, so it was very, very quiet the rest of the day. So I just kind of shut it down, protected my profits. I was happy to close out the week with the Friday that I had going into what is expected to be a very slow week with July 4th holiday. Um, we're closed on Thursday. We've got a half day Wednesday. Um, and so I expect a slow week. Okay. I expect a slow week. All right. So that's it guys. Take care. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday morning.